ad strength is one of those metrics in Google ads that Google is a huge fan of and advertisers, not quite as much. And recently there've been some discussions in the PPC community around what ad strength does and quite frankly, doesn't do. And I thought this was a good opportunity to rehash what ad strength is and talk about how it might impact your campaigns and then what you would wanna pay attention to depending on what your ad strength is. Well, let's start off by looking at Google's definition of ad strength because what they strive to do is provide you with feedback to help you focus on providing the right message to your customers. Now, even though this page is pretty short, there's a lot going on with it. The first thing we'll see here in the second paragraph is that there are five different ad strength scores, incomplete, poor, average, good, and excellent. What these are doing is it'll give you a gauge of the relevance, quality, and diversity of your ad copy based on what Google thinks. And that's evidenced by the next sentence. Ad strength shows you how well an ad creative follows Google's best practices for optimal performance. That in my mind should be the entire page because that is what ad strength is. It's an indicator based on Google's best practices. Now the last couple of parts here are where people have some problems and where things get confused. A higher ad strength will also help you to maximize your ad's performance. Combined with actionable feedback, ad strength makes it easier for you to improve the effectiveness of your ads. I have a really big beef with this and most advertisers do. Ad strength is not driving toward better performance for your ads and it's not driving toward better effectiveness. It's literally only optimizing toward Google's best practices based on what they've seen from a data set. I repeat, Higher ad strength does not equal better performance. That's just not the way it works. Instead, the way you should probably think about this is that since it's focused on Google's best practices, as it says in the second sentence of this paragraph, a higher ad strength might help your ads perform better because it leans into best practices. You might see the effectiveness of your ad increase because you have better ad strength, but again, it's not a guarantee and ad strength is not a metric to optimize toward. I cannot stress that enough. Now with that out of the way, let's start to focus on what this means for you and how you can use ad strength to maybe see better performance in your ads. First thing I want you to know is that down here at the bottom, you can see that ad strength is different for each of the different ad formats for responsive search ads, responsive display ads, app, demand gen, and although it's not on this page, we also need to focus on ad strength for performance max. So because I think they're probably the most commonly used, I'm only gonna talk about responsive search ads and performance max ad strength today. Let's hop into a live client account real quick. And I have this narrowed down to a specific ad group for a pretty specific reason. To get your ad strength metrics, I wanna come over to columns, modify. We'll go to attributes. And then there's two columns I wanna add while we're here even though we're only gonna talk about one first, we'll talk about the other later. First is ad strength. The second is ad strength improvements. I'm gonna bump those up in the order here and now click apply. Now we can start to see the ad strength that we have for each of these ads. As you can see, these are not the highest rated by Google. We have one average and two poor ads. Now, one thing I wanna note here, going back to some of the things we just talked about, while the average ad does have quite a lot of volume, that does not mean that because these two bottom ads have a poor rating, that that's why they're getting less impressions, less cost, less engagement. If you actually look at our main cost per lead that we're looking at, $69 is better than $79. Our performance is actually better with this poor ad than it is for the average ad. But what Google will say is that there is a distinguishing factor. This ad is not serving less because it has a poor ad strength. What they're saying is that it has a poor ad strength because it's not winning as many auctions and it's not being served as often. So this is a chicken and egg scenario where some of the performance that we have here is going to be the bigger indicator of ad strength. Now you might be saying, but what are you talking about? It actually has a higher click-through rate than the other one does. You're exactly right about that. It's very frustrating when poor ad variants have better performance across the metrics that we'd like to see than ads with average ad strengths. But again, it just goes to show you that ad strength is not a direct correlation to your actual ad performance. 
Now, one of the new columns that Google has added that I already added to this visual that I really like is ad strength improvements. Here you can see the suggestions that Google has for you to increase the ad strength for these responsive search ads. Previously, you used to have to come in and edit this, and then you'd be able to find the messages that you'd have up at the top and the warnings to show you what you should be including or not including in your ads to get better ad strength. But to cover the options that we can have here, let's go back to a Google Help article. And as we can see where I've put this screen, this is what the visual looks like when you're creating your ad and what the ad strength suggestions are going to be. They usually focus on adding more headlines and descriptions, adding unique headlines and descriptions, unpinning assets, which is a strategy unto itself, and including more keywords in your headlines and descriptions. These are the four main categories of suggestions that you're going to get for Google for your responsive search ads. Now, one thing that sparked some discussion about ad strength in the industry recently was a blog post that Google put out about Performance Max. We'll get to that here in just a second. But one of the takeaways from that post is that AI is going to have a much bigger presence in the ad creation process to help you create more diversity, have more breadth of your assets. And those tools are still available in responsive search ads. So let's hop back into that ad account and let's just pick one of the poor variants here. We'll click edit. And now obviously, since this is a client account, we're gonna have to blur all this out. But one of the things I find really helpful, if you need to start to look to optimize your ad strength, maybe not to make ad strength go up, but to try and troubleshoot poor performance, they will provide you ideas with what you could do here. So make your headlines more unique. Let's click view ideas. And now even though I've entered in the maximum number of headlines, so I can't click any of these, Google is providing me lots of different headlines that I could use for my ads. The first are mostly focused on the brand benefits or based on text that is on the landing page. But there's also other options down here, whether it's call to action phrases, promotional phrases, trust phrases, inventory, location, shipping. Those don't necessarily make sense for this business, but we have lots of opportunity here to expand our headlines in a way that would potentially improve performance and also possibly improve ad strength at the same time. Now here is the announcement where Google talked about more AI coming to Performance Max. That's gonna include the Gemini models and I believe Imagine 2 are going to be the different pieces here. But one of the things that we needed to note is basically focused on this paragraph right here. Moving forward, asset quantity and variety will be more heavily weighted in determining ad strength for Performance Max campaigns. This reflects their importance in helping you get the most out of the diverse inventory and formats available across Google channels. Now, one of the big issues is that now this is saying that you will have higher impact based on the number and variety of assets that you have for Performance Max. Many people interpreted that to mean if you don't have a wide variety or a high quantity of assets, that means that your ad strength will go down and your ads will not show as much because your ad strength is low. As we've already discussed, that is not how ad strength works, but you might end up with a low ad strength because you don't have a wide variety or a large quantity of assets. And the reason they brought this into this announcement is because they're also announcing tools to help you have better images, videos, and text with your Performance Max campaigns. So they're saying your ad strength will be impacted if you don't have large quantities or varieties of creative. And here are the new tools that we are giving you to have large quantities and large varieties of creative. And the reason that matters is based on inventory as well as some of those Google best practices that we've talked about. Also, as I mentioned earlier, every ad format has its own ad strength metrics. So if we come down to ad strength principles for Performance Max, Incomplete means you don't have enough assets to actually run. Poor means that your asset group only serves to some inventory because it doesn't have all of the assets it needs to run in every single placement. Now, a big takeaway here is that average, good, and excellent ad strengths for Performance Max all include all asset types available to serve on all inventories. The difference between an average, good, and excellent ad is based on the quantity and variety of assets you have. Average means that you have everything you need, but there's not a lot of variety. Good means that you have everything you need, you've got good variety, and there's good diversification. Excellent simply means that you have all the things that you have for a good rating, but you're also taking advantage of some of the optional assets that won't impact inventory, but are better for performance. 
So you're using all the bells and whistles. And then down below are gonna be the different text, image, video, and other asset requirements. And not only just that, but the minimum requirement, recommended, and maximum. So just think about that in terms of minimum, means that you're probably going to get an average score. Recommended, you'll likely get a good score. Maximum, you'll be more leaning into potentially an excellent score for your ad strength. The last thing I want you to think about are these takeaways. Ad strength is an indicator based on Google's best practices. It's only an indicator, it's not a guarantee. And additionally, better ad strength does not mean better performance, but you may see better performance from ads that have a higher ad strength. Again, ad strength does not influence performance. If anything, it's the other way around. And each ad format has its own ratings and systems that you need to use to try and figure out where you need to optimize your ads if you wanna follow Google's best practices and potentially see better performance. And don't forget, Google is still coming out with new tools to help you come up with more and better creatives and assets so that you can see better performance from your campaigns. Hopefully that demystifies ad strength a little bit. I would absolutely categorize this in the same group as optimization score and quality score in that they're meant to be indicators based on best practices, but that doesn't mean they're guarantees of better performance. If you have any additional questions about ad strength or any of those other metrics or anything else in the Google Ads interface, let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the Super Thanks button.